What's up guys, my name is Irina and welcome back to my channel where I review everything tech. So, in today's video, let's compare the cameras of these two phones, the 2020 iPhone SE and the Google Pixel 4a. And in this video, we'll take a look at some random daily photos, night shots, portraits, selfies and so much more. And at the end of this video, I'll test the side-by-side -side video quality and stabilization. But first, let's quickly go over the camera specs of these two phones. And this time, it's really easy. We have just one 12 megapixel camera on the iPhone SE. And similarly, we have just one 12.2 megapixel camera on the Pixel 4a. And when it comes to the apertures, we have a slightly larger aperture of 1.7 on the Pixel 4a compared to the aperture of 1.8 on the iPhone SE. And without further ado, let's dive into this camera comparison and start with some photos taken in the portrait mode. And the first difference I want to mention is that the Pixel 4a uses a two-time zoom in the portrait mode, while the iPhone SE does not. So so if you look at these two photos, you can see that they have different backgrounds. The background is zoomed in the photo from the Pixel 4a and it's not zoomed in the shot from the iPhone SE. And it's really up to your preferences, guys, but keep in mind that you have to get much closer to the person when you take a portrait with the iPhone SE. And that's why oftentimes the body of the person can look slightly distorted in the shot. And by distorted, I mean big head, really thin legs, usually these sort of things. And I think this this difference is pretty noticeable in these two portraits where the proportions of my body are correct in the photo from the Pixel 4a while they are slightly distorted in the shot from the iPhone SE. And let's take a look at the next two portraits. When it comes to colors, I think both phones did a really amazing job. The exposure is really balanced in both of these photos, but I think the main difference is that the Pixel always produces sharper portraits when compared to the iPhone. And it could be at times unflattering for the skin, since, let's face it, the smooth skin looks more appealing, but look how detailed my hair and my clothes look, which makes the shot look so live, and that's pretty amazing. And the last couple of photos in my portrait series, once again, we can see the difference in backgrounds. And when it comes to separation from the background, I would say both cameras are pretty good at it. However, both of these cameras make some mistakes from time to time, especially when it comes to flying hair. This video is brought to you by Wondershare. If you work with PDF files, Wondershare has an amazing tool which is called PDF Element. This is an all-in-one smart PDF editor which helps you edit, convert, sign PDF documents and so much more. And let me show how it actually works. One of my favorite features of PDF Element is OCR text recognition. So you can scan your PDF file and make it editable. And then you can make pretty much any amends you need in your file. You can paraphrase a sentence, correct a typo, delete or add some new text and so on. Also, in PDF element, you can easily convert your PDF file into other formats. So, for example, you could export it as a Word document, Excel, PowerPoint and many more. Another great thing about the PDF element is the form feature, which lets you create your own fillable document. So, let's say we have this scan and want to make a fillable form out of it, and it's really easy to do with all of these tools in PDF element. Or you can make your own new form from scratch. PDF element is an amazing tool tool to make your workflow efficient and productive, check out the links in the description with a free trial version, helpful tutorials and the discount. Back to the video and moving on to the daylight photos and you can judge them for yourself.
let's see how these two phones compare when it comes to zoomed photos. A quick reminder for you guys, for this type of photos, both phones use the digital zoom since they don't have the dedicated telephoto cameras. And let's start with some two-time zoom photos and I want to take a closer look here. The photo from the Pixel 4a seems crisper to me, you can clearly see the details of the water here. And next, let's look at these 5 time zoom photos and it looks like we have a recurrent pattern here. By the way, keep in mind that the 5 time zoom is the maximum zoom for the iPhone SE, while the Pixel 4a can do it up to 7 times. And I have to admit, for the digital 7 time zoom, this photo looks pretty good. And a few more zoomed photos for you guys. Now let's switch gears and talk about the front-facing cameras of these phones. We have an 8-megapixel camera with an aperture of 2.0 on the Pixel 4a and a 7-megapixel camera with an aperture of 2.2 on the iPhone SE. The main difference is that this is a wide-angle selfie camera on the Pixel 4a, while the camera on the iPhone SE gives you a more standard look. And I'm definitely a fan of wide-angle selfie cameras since it's so much easier to take a photo, you don't have to stretch out your hand too far you could easily take a group photo, I even managed to take a photo of me on my bike, while well, this is the best I could do with the selfie camera on the iPhone SE. And when it comes to the quality of selfies, both cameras won't leave you disappointed. You get pretty crisp, clear shots from both of these phones. But just like in the portrait mode, once again the Pixel 4a produces sharper looking selfies with more detailed hair, facial features and clothes. And now let's compare the sound quality and the video quality of these selfie cameras. So this is the sound from the Pixel 4a. And now I'm switching to the iPhone SE. And this is the sound from the iPhone SE. What do you think, guys? And since we're talking about the selfie cameras, let's also take a look at some night shots I've taken. We have the night sight mode for selfies on the Pixel 4a, and unfortunately we don't have a night mode on the iPhone SE. And I would say we have a dramatic difference here between these two night selfies. The shot from the Pixel looks very detailed and well exposed, while the selfie from the iPhone looks really grainy and somewhat soft. And let's look at these two night videos I've taken with the front-facing cameras. The video from the Pixel looks brighter here, but maybe it's even a bit too bright. Well, both of these videos are super grainy, but I think I like the video from the iPhone SE better in this case. And speaking of the low light, let's get back to the rear cameras of these phones and look at some night shots. The Pixel 4a is the only phone between these two that has the night mode, which is called the night sight on the Pixel phones. But first, I was curious to see how these phones would compare without the night mode being enabled on the Pixel. So in this case, I didn't use the night sight mode on the Pixel 4a and I would say both of these phones produced pretty good night shots. And then I have enabled the night mode on the Pixel and as you can see right away we get a more detailed and much sharper looking photo from the Pixel 4a. And then I waited for it to get even darker outside and look what I've got. The difference in exposure is dramatic here. The night shot from the Pixel 4a looks really detailed when compared to the one from the iPhone SE. However, if I zoom into these photos, the buildings in the background look pretty sharp in the photo from the iPhone SE, while they look a little soft in the photo from the Pixel 4a. 
I think it happens because you have to hold your pixel still for several seconds while you're taking a night shot. Sometimes it's not that easy, especially if it's windy outside. And when it comes to the iPhone SE, it just snaps the shots right away. So I think it's possible to get even better night shots from the Pixel 4a, especially if you use a tripod, but making this camera comparison, I was just using my hands just like most regular users would do. And a few more night shots for you guys. Now let's see how these cameras compare when it comes to videos. Both of these phones are capable of shooting 4K videos, however, when it comes to the Pixel 4a, you can only take videos at 30 frames per second, while the iPhone SE lets you choose between 24, 30 and 60 frames per second. And let's look at some daylight videos and you can judge them for yourself. And let's do the stabilization test, and it looks like both of these phones are pretty good at it. However, I would say the Pixel 4a does a better job here. It seems like the video from the iPhone SE is kinda rocking from side to side, while the video from the Pixel 4a looks super still. And finally, a few night videos for you guys. So these are all the photos and videos I had to show you guys. I think, as expected, the camera on the new Pixel 4a is actually really good. The video stabilization, the night side mode, the portrait mode, everything looks great. And taking into account the price of this phone, you definitely get a good bang for your buck, especially when it comes to the camera performance. Similarly, the iPhone SE is no slouch either. It has a well-balanced camera, which, as I've shown in my previous camera comparisons, is able to hold its own against more expensive iPhone models. Let me know in the comments which camera's performance you liked better and why. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and see you in the next one!